I am. You're always welcome at Mount Zion. Our traditional opening on Sunday morning worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We notified our congregation that we would be canceling worship services on Sunday morning, March the 15th, and again on Sunday morning, March the 22nd. This is due to a request both from our presiding bishop and also the governor of the state of Maryland, who requested that church congregations seriously consider not meeting together because of health-related means. We sent out a letter this past week to our congregation, and in that letter we made a very serious request. And the request was that we look out for one another. There are people in the church who may need medical help, maybe some need food, some may need to go to a doctor's appointment. I'm asking you as pastor to call people in the congregation that you think you have not seen or not heard from and find out if they could use a ride or if they could use something from the store. I think a real Christian congregation is a church that cares for one another and shows that they care because others may be not quite as fortunate uh, as we are. In that letter we contain other information too, including the fact that if you are home and not able to get to the church building, we enclosed a suggested worship service that you could use at home. We will constantly update that so that you can have information if you're not able to get to the building itself. I need to thank Kathy and Mark for recording this service because it's coming to you and the opportunity for us to stay in touch with our congregation. During the Lenten season, we have been asking our congregation to use a prayer by St. Francis. Let me share that prayer with you and then hopefully when you receive the mailing for this coming week, because we want to stay in touch with our congregation, that you'll be able to use this prayer as well. The Peace Prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. This coming Sunday, the 15th, we have asked our congregation to take a look at a little booklet that we gave out free to our congregation entitled The Sanctuary for Lent. We have picked several key passages that you will get in your mailing. They're called Lenten Reflections. I'm going to ask you to read those. There's about 11 of them. But let me just lift up very briefly four of those which I think were important to me. And let me read from the little booklet these words. We enter into the season of Lent and receive this gritty reminder, from dust you have come to dust you shall return. This 40-day trek through the wilderness beckons us to take a hard look at inside ourselves. It seeks us to address how we have hurt others, how others have hurt us, and how we need to repent. One of the advantages of the Lenten season as we prepare for Holy Week and Easter is the opportunity that we have to take a critical look at ourselves and a critical look how we, how we relate to other people as well. Number four was an interesting one from the little booklet for me. Last year, she writes, last year I decided to turn off my distractions. I fasted from social media, watched minimal amounts of television, and practiced being present to my own emotions and those of my loved ones. I found my mind to be more at peace. I recovered time I had previously wasted. I lingered with people longer and took in my surroundings more fully. Social media and television and, uh, are certainly good things and can be very helpful for us. But sometimes it's good to practice some serious meditation. Spend some time directly with God. Spend some quiet time. For Judy and I, it's lighting a candle because candles have always been important for us. And in a darkened room, 
just kind of celebrate what it means to be God's people. Allow God to speak with us, and as somebody said, keep quiet so we can hear God's voice. That's number four on your sheet. Take a look at number eight. It says, Jesus is our model for Sabbath. In the Jewish tradition, the Sabbath was sundown on Friday to sundown on Saturday. And supposedly a good Jew was to use that 24-hour period to focus beyond themselves on God. We live in a 24-7 society, and it's very difficult for us today to have a day that we can strictly devote. But my concern to you is, what amount of time do you spend each day, each week, having a relationship with God? I have found as I get older, it's more and more difficult for me to stay awake at night. After a nice meal and watching the evening news, I've often heard my wife say, why don't you go to bed? You're snoring, you're asleep. So I have found that mornings, that mornings are my best time. We have two cats that we love, and they somehow have an automatic, um, an automatic alarm that gets them up around 5 or 5.15 every morning. So by 5.30, I'm up, the cats are fed, and I'm walking the development where we live uh, picking up newspapers that the uh, mail person has thrown on the wall, putting it up against people's houses. I'm known as the mail boy. But beyond that, that hour and a half is my time to talk to God. It's a time that I can complain to God, I can argue with God, but I can allow God to speak with me. My question would be as your pastor, when is your time? How often do you really spend allowing God to speak with you? That Sabbath time, it's time with God. And then finally, uh, a number 11 on the sheet. Sabbath helps us turn our attention and intentions back to God. It reminds us who we are, who God is, and who we want to be. Our families practice Sabbath. And the writer goes on, I haven't been a parent for long, but I think we get actually frustrated at our kids because they slow down our doing. They want us to be in the moment, to put down our computers, to just be with them. We are so used to producing that we don't know how to turn it off. Consider that. Consider the opportunity of finding time in your week that you can fellowship directly with God. Again, I give the opportunity and thank you for the opportunity to come into your homes or wherever you are. I thank Mark and Kathy for making this available. And if you have a reaction or a comment uh, when you see this, I would appreciate it if you get back to Kathy Rickson or Mark Hemler or to me personally and just tell us uh, other ways that we can communicate with a congregation. Our building, in a sense, will be closed for two Sundays, but we are deeply concerned about our people. The reason we sent you a worship service that you can use at home is because while corporate worship may stop for two weeks, our worship of God doesn't stop. Worship goes on because it's something that we do as the people of God. Thanks again for inviting us into your home. Would you join with me now in a closing moment of prayer? The Lord be with you. Holy and loving God, you are with all your people. We are never alone. You are our truly our Emmanuel. No matter where we go or what we do, your presence is felt in our midst. Be with those friends and members of Mount Zion, especially those who are not feeling well, for those who are going through a difficult time, for those who are struggling with age and with health. Remind us that we are not isolated individuals, but we are part of the body of Jesus Christ, and we are called to love one another. Help us to make that call to someone we haven't seen, or someone who's going through a tough time, or someone who's a shut-in and can't get to the building. Remind them that they are loved, and if there's a need that we can fulfill, help us to do just that. O oh God, hear our prayer, and be with all of our people, for we ask this in your holy and blessed name. Amen. Again, thank you.